Okay, we're back here. Final stretches of the OpenStack Summit. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. This is our exclusive coverage of the OpenStack Summit in Portland, Oregon. I'm here with John Walker with Red Hat, with Gluster. You guys came over to Red Hat. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So you can see us where our eyes are bleeding. Three days of wall-to-wall <laughs> -wall coverage and an amazing, I mean we could run, I mean I could literally go another six hours. We have guests but our team will collapse. Alcohol may or um, may not have been involved. Um, <laughs> well, that's not a problem, we've had no, we've had no problem. <laughs> it's just the pure signal here has been amazing. Not a lot of hype, a lot of real, real development. Um, talk about what you're doing here, and some of the things uh, that are happening around OpenStack that you're orbiting into. Sure, absolutely. Uh, GlusterFS is a scale-out distributed file system. Uh, it can work in, uh, on uh, all the cloud platforms, and uh, on, on, uh, it, it, it has a, presents a single namespace, so it works uh, the same whether it's on bare metal or any virtualized environment. Um, what we're doing with OpenStack specifically, and, and to be honest, we're kind of late to the OpenStack party, but now that we're here, we're, we're going in full force. And so, uh, what we do, we have integration points with all the storage interfaces with uh, OpenStack, that includes OpenStack Swift, uh, OpenStack Glance, uh, now OpenStack Sender. And uh, what we've got coming out is a new release, GlusterFS 3.4, uh, and what it features is a tight integration with KVM and QMU, so that you can do VM image hosting and get uh, pretty good performance, and it integrates right in with uh, Sender and uh, OpenStack, so you can use OpenStack to control all your VM images on GlusterFS. Let me, let me ask you a question, take a step back and, and, and share with the folks out there some of the hallway, hallway conversations that you're getting into. Obviously last night was a lot of activity, a lot of social, yeah, I went to, we went to three events, a lot of people are pretty happy. A lot of people are excited. I mean, just what are some of the hallway conversations that you just bump in? Just you know, some of the some of the shop tech shop, shop you're talking with people. What's the what's the main buzz? Well, the main thing I get asked about is you know when are we going to see uh, an integrated solution with GlusterFS? And I'm I'm telling people it's right around the corner that we we now we have the pieces in place. It's just a matter of time before we get you know that that uh, easily deployed solution that you can just rip and go. Um, those are the things I'm asked about a lot. But I'm also asked about, you know, where's OpenStack going? Uh, how, how popular is this going to be? When you look at the trajectory of the last two years, it's been phenomenal, with the growth of OpenStack, and it looks like that's going to go unabated, and, to, and it's going to continue uh, to grow just like it has. And the numbers are fantastic, at 3,000, almost 3,000 people here, and a lot of enterprises, a lot of users showing off their wares, so, and there's a lot of tire kickers. I mean, I see people lurking in there, obviously online, a lot of great audience on SiliconANGLE um, watching, and just, it just seems like the enterprise, this is perfect fit for the enterprise. Well, that's, that's part of the joy of open source, is that the tire kickers come out in force, and they're the ones who push your, your product or project in directions that you never thought was possible. That's part of what open source is all about. Uh, they may never actually buy something, or they may never actually you know, be a long-term uh, committer or part of your project, but they're the ones who set things in motion. They give you sort of that, that, that uh, sense of uh, gravitas. So they give you that, that large center of gravity. And also feedback, too. They can tell you, hey, Absolutely. this is tar horrible product. <laughs> this sucks. You know, fix that, <laughs> build this. <laughs> you and never then have they, to then they leave. <laughs> oh, just kick your tires. <laughs> There's no shortage of opinions in the open source community, as, as anyone who's participated in this that's can tell the, you. That's why the cube uh, is so popular here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're very reluctant with your opinions, I can see. <laughs> I, of course. <laughs> we don't hold back. Um, but we give props when we need to be prop. But you know, so so talk about the, the the acquisition cluster to Red Hat and why that went down and why was the fit there? Sure. Uh, well, it's it's easy to see the fit. I mean, when you look at how much data uh, is now being uh, consumed and, and driven through the enterprise, uh, you have to have a scale out solution that can handle all of it and, and do something with it. Uh, the problem is the proprietary solutions, you keep having to go back every year and re-upping your license. You, you need a, an open source solution that you can easily add uh, more uh, data to it and that's elastic and can scale up or down as you need. Um, Red Hat saw that and Red Hat has you know, this large bevy of uh, uh, products with touch points that, that all sort of center around storage. And so they said, well, if we have this elastic scale at storage thing, uh, it's going to help us build out all of our product lines, not just you know, the storage product line. Uh, and so when you go back to October of 2011, which is when the acquisition occurred, you know, that's, that was part of the thought process. How do, we, how do we engage with our customers in such a way that we can tell them, yes, you know, we can grow your data platform with you with all these other apps running on top of it. I had a great, uh, great interactions last night with the Red Hat folks, C CTO was there. Yes. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the core 
the core folks. Great community, you guys are no stranger to community, obviously open source is, is, is you know, obviously now going mainstream. You're, the roots in, in Rad Hat are, are there. What's your, what's your uh, personal take, and if you can share with the folks, the, the, the word community has been kind of a, a punchline. People use it a lot as a marketing slogan. Sure. And oh, we have a community, the community. But in reality, communities are critical, and OpenStack's proved it, that Absolutely. here, a successful community can really do some great things fast and high quality. Um, as communities grow, what is that model? How, what would you share best practices of good community work? Well, let's look at the example of what happened to us after the acquisition. You know, before the acquisition, we were kind of an insular, tight-knit engineering group. We weren't externally focused. It was all about you know, creating this product internally, and it happened to be under an open source license. There's a big difference between that and the true open source community where we're externally focused, and we're looking at you know, contributors and working with contributors and outside communities like the OpenStack Foundation, the OpenStack community. And as a milestone that, that we can point to now, we actually have our first major feature that's being contributed into this next release that came from a non-core engineer. It's a, it's a huge victory for us and it shows us how we've grown over the past two years and where we're going and how it's just going to you know, grow further from here. It's beyond just technical model, there's business models involved. Rackspace, Absolutely. we heard Jim Curry say here on theCUBE earlier, huge well, business model benefits to them as a halo effect. Absolutely, it's, it, when you look at the adoption-led model, which is really what open source is about, the customers take control. It's, it's about ceding the control to the customer, and the customer tells you what to do. And it's the ultimate example of that, and you're giving the customers the freedom to say yes or no, or how much, uh, on their time schedule. And that's exactly what an open source is And you know, about. we love that too, because one of the things that Jeff and I are passionate about, and Dave Vellante, who's not here, uh, and Wikibon, one of the things we're really passionate about is we're open source content, so the crowd, sourcing dynamic is open source, it's people. Yes. And you get signals and you can get instant feedback from not just hierarchy, because people <laughs> will punch you in the face, you know, like, or, and, and, and or mobs, <laughs> angry mobs, or, you know, so this is the way this is no debate here, right? I mean, no. this is what's happening. Crowdsourcing financing, crowdsourcing this, they're crowdsourcing the suspects in Boston yes, as they we are. speak. So this community model is going to explode. Let me tell you something. We have seen the last ubiquitous proprietary solution in the enterprise. I mean, we have, you look at the innovation that's happening right now, it's happening around all of these open source ecosystems. You look at the companies that are driving this forward, like the, the, the Facebooks, the Netflixes, the Twitters, yeah. it, and they're working with companies like Red Hat who understand this intuitively. We're the ones driving forward. Uh, you know, the old models of the, the proprietary uh, software makers, you, that's not where the innovation is now, and you can see it, uh, it's yeah. driving away from it. And them. the big leaders are recognizing that as well. I mean, IBM, HP, they're all basically endorsing it. HP was on theCUBE here. They said, hey, we, look, we could have done a proprietary cloud. There was a conversation. They have a tool chest full of stuff they right. could have done, and they're going OpenStack all the way. This doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't wouldn't make sense. sense to do the proprietary method. So well, what's the next big challenge with that model, though, right? Clearly, everything's working great, but if, if we're going to do our little SWOT analysis and- The and, next and big kind of challenge is cloud challenge interoperability. Model. It's all about the open hybrid cloud. How do you make clouds such that, you know, they're best of breed solutions so that the customer, again, gets to drive the, the ball. And it's not about the vendor driving things, it's about the customer choosing, picking and choosing the solutions that work for them, you know, on their schedule so they can access their data their way. That's what the future is all about. And that's where we get, you know, uh, interoperability between clouds. That's why uh, I love the OpenStack model of, letting uh, 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 operators deploy multiple clouds, but making sure that they interoperate in this you know, vast mesh network. Mm -hmm. I think that's brilliant. I think that is the way forward and how we're, where we're going. Okay, John Walker, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. Red Hat, Gluster, you guys successful acquisition. Tuck in for, for Red Hat. Red Hat had a great week. Um, some great, great announcements across the board from all the uh, emerging sectors of Red Hat. A lot of action going on. The deal with Horton Works. You guys had some work going on in all the areas around op uh, open source. And so we also announced this week that GlusterFS is OpenStack ready, so. Congratulations. Thank okay, you. we'll be right back with our wrap up here. Day three, our final day here inside theCUBE. I uh, want to give a shout out to all the folks back at the ranch at siliconangle.com and Wikibon for uh, blocking behind all these great interviews. I want to thank uh, Mick and Kenny for doing a great job and Kristen Nicole, Mark Risen Hopkins. Um, we'll be right back to wrap up day three and put a, put a bow on this event. Exclusive coverage of the OpenStack Summit from siliconangle.com, theCUBE. We'll be right back. Thank you.